Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. You know, we talked severe weather, safety, and what to do in strong storms, but sometimes you may not think about the flooding side of stuff. But the National Weather Service on any given year issues over 4,000 flash flood warnings, and flash flood deaths sometimes can be more than what we talk about on other severe weather. So we're talking with Dr. Amanda Schroeder from the National Weather Service, a hydrologist. At, uh, so Amanda, when people are thinking floods, not, not all floods are the same. What, what's the difference between say your regular river flooding and your flash flooding? Yeah, so there are definitely some differences between river flooding and, and flash flooding. Typically, um, the time duration is gonna be a little different. Your river floods typically last more on the time scale of days to weeks. Whereas the traditional um, definition of a flash flood it would be the rapid inundation of water onto normally dry land over a short, shorter period of time. So those typically um, it's within six hours of what caused it, which oftentimes is heavy rainfall. Um, but yeah, so those time scales for flash flooding is usually on the order of minutes to hours, whereas river flooding is, is days to weeks. So people like when you talk river flooding, I think a lot of people get surprised that it doesn't have to rain where you are to cause big flooding concerns, right? For sure, yeah. You may have um, a heavy rain event up at the, the headwaters, the t top part of the of the river, and that's gonna downstream, it's gonna flow downstream. So you're still gonna have those floodwaters that are gonna have to make it all, all the way down to the Gulf, at least for Texas anyway. Explain to people, let's, let's talk flash flood, the difference between the advisories you put out, watches, and warnings for, for that potential of, uh, of flooding. So for watches, advisories, and warnings, um, watches are in your um, time frame of, they're issued six to 48 hours before the event starts. So think of a watch as your ingredients are coming together, um, but they're not necessarily um, the development of the flash flood hasn't started yet. So that's the time for people to become prepared. Now, when it comes to the flood advisories, those are issued once the, um, the flood has started or is about to, um, but those are designated to alert the public for um, less severe types of impacts. It's more of an inconvenience. That being said, um, if you don't take caution um, when you when you encounter these kinds of, of floods that an advisor would have been out for, it can um, harm life and property. So you do need to be careful. So that would be the action for those. When it comes to flash flood warnings or river flood warnings for that matter, um, those are issued to alert the public when we have um, the flash flood or the river flood ongoing or about to begin. And those have more significant impacts. So that's a time when you need to take action to um, to protect yourself because it can be a threat to life and property. And you were talking about impacts. One really awesome thing that the National Weather Service does now is your impact-based warnings. Not all warnings are the same and have the same impacts. What, what are those impact-based tags that you put in warnings? How, how much can that help out people knowing how bad the flooding can be? So in late 2019, the National Weather Service incorporated impact-based warnings into their flash flood warnings. Um, and what that means is previous to 2019, they would um, set off your cell phone. The wireless emergency alerts would go off for every single flash flood warning that came out. Um, but now since late 2019, we have the ability to put impact-based tags, damage tags, threat tags um, to these warnings. So. Um, what that means is a base flash flood warning is not going to have um, a wireless emergency alert tag attached to it. So your cell phone's not going to go off. It's still flash flooding. It's still dangerous. But what we're reserving those, um, those higher echelon, if you will, um, types of flash flood events um, for those impact based tags. So a considerable tag would be issued or a catastrophic tag, which would be akin to a flash flood emergency. So those are designated for more widespread, um, significant impacts that would um, definitely um, pose a risk to life and, th and property. So your office in Fort Worth, you all cover a large area of North and Central Texas, but you also cover a lot of urban areas. What, what kind of concerns do you all have with heavy rain when it's over urban areas? Because people near rivers know that those could flood, but urban areas can see some rapid flooding just due to all the concrete houses in place. Does that cause more issues when it comes to flooding? 
Oh, absolutely. The, um, the arrival time, the onset of the flash flood event is sped up tremendously when you go into an, an urban area, just because it's impervious, the rain can't go through, all it can do is run off and pile up. So it's, you get a flash flood a lot quicker in an urban area in general than a rural environment. So those warnings, those advisories and warnings are gonna go out generally a lot sooner for the same type of intense rainfall over compared to a rural area region. And, and another thing that's interesting, and maybe you can help, a lot of people think, you know, a lot of Texas has been in an extreme drought, but when you go from a drought to an extreme heavy rain, what, what kind of issues do you get with the ground not being absorbent and just everything that gets pushed off, all the debris that was sitting around that could cause more issues with a flood? Yeah, for sure. So that's kind of, often in Texas, it goes from drought to flood. That's just the way it works. And, but those, when you have really um, extreme drought conditions like what we had this summer, and you get a, a very heavy rain event that falls on that, it's acting like almost like an urban surface where that rainfall is just gonna run off. It can't absorb that quickly into the extremely parched dry land. So again, you're gonna end up with um, a faster response and a quicker arrival of a flash flood event. Yeah, the whole drought to a flood and flood to a drought. We saw that just here recently with Lake Waco nearly doubled in its volume in less than a week thanks to rain that never even fell in Waco. So it was a very, very interesting. So speaking of something like that with a ton of water, people, I don't think people understand the strength that rushing water has. What, what are, I know there's some set levels of kind of to be safe, but how much power does fast moving rushing flood water have? Yeah, flood waters, water in general is very, very dangerous and extremely powerful. It only takes six inches of water to knock a person off their feet. And 12 inches of water will begin to float a passenger car. So as you can imagine, the higher, um, the, higher the flood gets, the more powerful it can become. And you can end up with massive vehicles being completely washed downstream um, just because of the sheer power of water. National Weather Service have come out with a great easy slogan that everyone should follow, but I don't think everybody does. T talk about your the, the turnaround, don't drown kind of program and uh, kind of slogan that y'all try to get out. Yeah, so it's been around for a long time, the, the um, program for turnaround, don't drown. And there's actually a country song that goes along with it. There's a YouTube for it. Um, but yeah, essentially what it amounts to is when you encountered flooded waters, there's no way to tell accurately how deep that water is, or really even if the roadway beneath it is still there. So the your best bet to be safe would be to turn around um, and not drive through the flooded roadways. And there are actually recent research has shown that um, when it comes to people encountering flooded roadways, Barricades tend to do a pretty good job. Most people don't drive around them, which is good because those are put in place because that's a known safety issue. It's known that that is a dangerous area when it, it, when it floods. Um, but when it comes to uh, coming uh, into contact with, with areas that are not barricaded yet, um, a lot of times people will do what the person in front of them did monkey see monkey do so a big massive dually pickup truck may be able to get through it but it may not but if it does and the little passenger car behind it tries to go through chances are they they can't but there's really no way to know um, just how deep that water is your office is in the fort worth uh, weather service and you cover a big area that can see some pretty significant floods are there any off the top of your mind that you remember of major flood events that you've covered um, well, I've been in the National Weather Service for about a decade now, and all of it's been in Texas. So I was um, a, a forecaster during the, um, the May 2015 flood events that it seemed like it rained every day somewhere in North Texas for six or seven weeks straight. Um, we had the tropical storm um, bill that came across just a month or so after that intensified over Texas because it was so wet. Um, let's see, Hurricane Harvey. Um, back in 2017, and there's just been a lot of, of convective, very dangerous flash flood events in our area over the last 10 years. Pre-Hurricane Harvey, did you ever think there was a chance that you'd see a storm dump 50 plus inches of rain? I, I just trying to imagine that just still, I mean, I talked to a meteorologist on TV that worked there and he's like, how do I tell people 50 inches and what even happens then? I mean, it's, it's insane to think something like that could happen. 
Oh, for sure. And so I, I worked the event at the time. I was working for the Rib Forecast Center, um, which is also in Fort Worth. And I remember looking across um, the the cubicle at my one of my fellow forecasters, and each each issuance that just kept ticking up and ticking up. And you're like, this is unbelievable. This is you know completely historical. And you never thought you would have come across um, a storm that could do that much, um, provide that much rainfall. But the science behind it, you couldn't dispute it. So you, you had to go with it. And sure enough, that's that's what happened. Well, Amanda, I really appreciate you taking some time to talk with us. And again, hopefully we get a little of that flood safety out and hopefully we're not dealing with too many flash floods coming soon. But again, Amanda, I appreciate you taking time to talk with us. Thank you so much.